Welcome to Season 4 of Adventures in the Spirit with Jared Lasky. This podcast is not just information, but impartation and activation. We believe that every conversation will encourage, equip, and empower you to live the daily supernatural life. Subscribe to this podcast and then share every episode with your friends and family and be activated. And welcome to another adventure in the Holy Spirit. I'm your host, Jared Lasky. This is the final episode of Adventures in the Spirit for season four on the Charisma Podcast Network. But I want to encourage you guys, share this episode, give us a five-star rate and review, share it with your friends, your family, because it's going to be a powerful episode. But be prepared for the upcoming season five. So remember to subscribe and share this podcast anywhere and everywhere you listen to podcasts. I also want to encourage you guys, I have a free PDF available for you on how to dialogue with the Holy Spirit. You, If you've been following this ministry for a while, you know that we love the Holy Spirit and we love to equip and empower you to have relationship with him, to receive his incredible infilling, uh, to do what Jesus did for the glory of God. So I have a free PDF available for you on dialogue with the Holy Spirit. But guys, I'm excited to bring my special guest on this podcast, Pastor Jeff Leak. He's been a pastor for many years in Allison Park Church, a multi-campus church in the Pittsburgh area. He's the founder of the Network of Hope and Northeast Ministry School. He's got some um, master's degrees. And you know me, I've got a couple of those myself. And it just gets us closer to Jesus, closer into the Word of God. He's an author. And today we're going to be talking about your gateway into the supernatural life. So please help me welcome Jeff Leak to Adventures in the Spirit. Welcome, Jeff. Thank you so much, Jared. I, I'm so excited to be with you today. Well, it's an honor and a pleasure to have you on. But Jeff, love to hear your story, how you came to Christ and start working and moving in the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So I grew up in a pastor's home. My dad uh, pastored a great church just a little bit to the east of where I am in Pittsburgh. Uh, honestly, though, even though I had probably prayed the salvation prayer many times growing up, I didn't have my um, you know, turning point moment until I was 15 at a youth camp. And I think I understood the gospel in a way that maybe I hadn't before. And I came forward that, uh, at, a, at that youth camp and gave my life to Jesus. And uh, from that moment, I felt, um, I remember feeling this burning in my chest, like um, I knew something had changed in me. And um, the very next thing that started to transpire was I started feeling a passion for my high school. Uh, the, the, you know, almost an automatic sense of the Holy Spirit's awareness that he had mission on my life and he had a purpose for me. And so, uh, yeah, that just began a, a journey towards ministry. I kind of, it was a shy kid from a suburban town, um, but one step at a time, you know, have ended up now here at the church that I pastor for a little over 30 years. Amen. Amen. Well, how did you receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit? And what is that exactly? Yeah, so uh, that same youth camp, um, probably night three, uh, after I'd given my life to Christ, they talked about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so I remember going forward and um, expecting a lightning bolt to hit me. Um, I had heard about speaking in tongues, and so I expected to speak in tongues and thought that God would move my tongue for me. And I would have this almost out-of-body experience where all of a sudden I, I was out of control of myself and um, none of that happened. In fact, I went away disappointed because I felt like somehow I hadn't broken through. Uh, I'm kind of introverted in nature. And so I had about 15 of my friends that were surrounding me and laying hands on me. And it was a hot night and we were rocking back and forth. And I felt such pressure at that particular moment form something. Uh, so I left there feeling a little disappointed. And I remember talking to my father, walking through the scriptures. He patiently answered my questions. Um, felt like every service I went to, they talked about that. And if ever, you've ever had that happen where, you know, that thing you're trying to avoid every Bible study, every sermon. And finally, it was October 20th, 1980. I was in my living room with a friend. He said, bro, you are making this way too hard. <laughs> he said, the Holy Spirit lives in you. And I know because I can sense his presence is on your life. You just need to step out in obedience to what's happening inside of you. And let the Holy Spirit start to activate within you. And so right there in my living room, just the two of us, I started praying out loud, praying in the Spirit. I felt the presence of God flood me there. Uh, it wasn't a lightning bolt sort of, uh, you know, extraterrestrial kind of experience. It was just very normal. 
And I think that's actually what's led me to this this idea that I that I titled the book. And that is a lot of times people look at the baptism of the Holy Spirit as an end. Like I'm going to get there and I'm going to experience this and then I'm going to cross up the list and say, been there, done that, bought the T-shirt. Right. Um, I actually think it's the beginning of something. And it's at the beginning of a partnership with the Holy Spirit where he wants to do things in and through us every single day that are beyond the natural. So stepping into that moment of being baptized in the Holy Spirit starts you into a partnership with God, the Holy Spirit, that, that puts you on an adventure that is you'll never be the same. I mean, it is it is truly one of the greatest experiences that I should say that we begin at that moment where we're baptized in his spirit. Amen. I love that. I'm in agreement with you there. I, all too often, and I think my listeners have even heard this, me say this before, that I think too often churches have a tendency to say that the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that's that's it. Once you're, you know, you're saved, you're water baptized, you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but I believe it's a doorway. And as you yeah. said in your book, it's a gateway into the supernatural life. So for someone who is curious about it or seeking it or wanting to receive what are some of the steps, if you will? I don't want to get formulaic or methodical or anything like that. But as you'd said, it's an adventure. What are some of the things that could get them going in the right direction and then see what the Holy Spirit does in them? Yeah. So I think first it's good to understand how important this was to Jesus. So, you know, John chapter 20, Jesus shows up in resurrected form to his disciples and breathes on them. And they receive the Holy Spirit, much, much like what happens when we get saved. Uh, the Holy Spirit ignites us and we are born spiritually or born again. Acts chapter one, where Jesus introduces this or reintroduces this idea of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They've already received the Holy Spirit. But Jesus says to them, you are not ready to do what I've called you to do. Wait in Jerusalem for the gift my father promised, because in a few days you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Jesus knew they didn't have enough uh, at that particular point in their life. They needed to be fully activated in the Holy Spirit's power so that they could do what, what, he, what he was calling them to do. What the disciples did then was they began to pursue that. They waited, they did what Jesus told them. They waited in Jerusalem and they spent time in prayer. They prepared their heart for the moment where the Holy Spirit would be poured out on them. So I think what's, what's some steps to do is I think first you need to say, Jesus, is this, if, since this is something that you said is critically important to my life as a follower of Christ, I don't want to just go on in my life without waiting for the gift that you promised me to. I want you to baptize me in the Holy Spirit. I want to be fully activated in your presence so that I can live in the full power that you have promised that you want me to live in. So what is the spirit baptism? Some people call it the baptism in the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And my my viewers, listeners know I, I prefer baptism with the Holy Spirit. But what is it? Yeah. So, well, let me ask you, why do you use the word with? What's the, what's the distinction there for you? Oh, I'm using where the apostle, well, not the apostle, but John the Baptist says, here he is, Jesus, who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit, yeah. with the Holy Spirit. So we see that in, in three of the four gospels. And for me, um, there, there's, it, I don't want to get too heady on this, but in, ein, and epi, some of the Greek terms on that, yeah. but, you know, our English can only capture so much. And I don't think that there's a conspiracy to, you know, say it's, I think too many people make too much of, you know, some of the terms, but it's like baptism in the Holy Spirit, baptism of the Holy Spirit, baptism with the Holy Spirit, one and the same thing. And we should pursue that uh, for that empowerment for be a better equipped witness for Jesus. Yeah. So let's use, let's talk about one of the other words in the sentence that word baptism, right? So that means to dip under. Right. So capsize is to dip, tip over, baptize is to dip under. So Jesus, in effect, is saying, I'm going to take you and dip you in the Holy Spirit so that you're fully immersed in, overwhelmed by the person of the Holy Spirit. Again, the third person of the Trinity, very much God. He's going to overwhelm you. He's going to flow from you and, and begin to operate in you in ways that that are absolutely immersive in nature. Um, so. Uh, you know, in Luke chapter, is it 24, where Jesus says, you'll be clothed with mm -hmm. power from on high. Yeah. And so it's almost like putting on clothing. You're going to now, the Holy Spirit's going to come completely. He's going to envelop you so that you begin to walk in his power and 
I don't know if this is correct theologically, but it's a, it's a great statement to make, right? When we get saved, we receive the Holy Spirit or we get the Holy yep. Spirit. When mm-hmm. we are baptized in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit gets us. Meaning that yep. we, we now are an instrument in his hands for him to use in ways that he wants to use us. And so for me, it's that immersive clothed with experience with the best person in the universe. Like the Holy Spirit is way better than we realize. He's got, he's got everything we need. Like he knows everything and he's always joy and he's always peace. And he's, and he, and he has insights into what's going on in people's lives. And he can unlock so much of the word of God to us. I mean, he is my best friend, right? So being immersed in him, oh man, it is, it, there is nothing better than the person of the Holy Spirit. Do you want the power of God to be evident in your life? Do you need to receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit? Are you curious about the spiritual gift of speaking in tongues? And do you want it in your life? My wife and I have a free e-course available for you called the Baptism with the Holy Spirit, where you will learn the biblical truth and spiritual reality of the baptism with the Holy Spirit. And you'll hear true stories of how people receive the promised gift. The videos in this e-course will expand your knowledge and understanding of the Holy Spirit baptism. You'll be drawn closer in relationship with the Holy Spirit and receive prayer and activation into the baptism with the Holy Spirit. You can also go through it with a small group of friends, a church class, or a discipleship group. You could download the accompanying PDF for each lesson and apply the principles to your life and take the action steps. Your faith will grow as you read the scriptures, watch the videos, and participate in the activation. The gift is for you. The gift is for today. The gift is to empower your spiritual life. We know that you will finish this course with a divine empowerment that comes through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So start your journey today. Go to charismacourses.com slash collections and click on Jared Lasky and enroll in the baptism of the Holy Spirit e-course. And he, even in Acts chapter 2, uh, on the third uh, verses 38 to 39, you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Mm. And say, for my book, I didn't get into too much detail about what it means for the gift of the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit. I just elaborated more on the baptism with the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit that makes us a better equipped witness for Jesus. And it was, it was a message that I I had to release to the world. As my listeners know, I went through uh, a health scare earlier this year and I was like, you never know when, when it's your time, Mm -hmm. when God will receive you. And if anything, this was the message I had to release to the world. And now there's um, discussion even today about it getting into Slovenia and into Pakistan. Wow. So then there's you know, having to navigate some of that stuff as well. But, uh, you know, this is, this is what I live for and your book. Uh, so I, I don't have your more recent one, which is the mm-hmm. republishing of it, which yeah. is the gate gateway into the supernatural life. But I do have the book power for life, which was the first edition, if you will. Yep. Mm-hmm. And in that, I, so I'd read that years ago. Uh, so it was published in 2017. And this is, you know, I've gone back to this book every couple of years or so. And um, so with the the newer edition, I'm, you know, I'll, I'll put a link for my listeners to purchase that. But you make it so practical. And, it, you know, some people tend to kind of make the baptism with the spirit mystical. It has to be a certain way. Some people, I'd heard stories of about people who believed you don't receive the baptism with the spirit unless the the curtains in your house are twirling supernaturally. Like, you know what I mean? Just because maybe that was someone else's story. And so this mm-hmm. small group of churches, that's what they believed. But it's just, uh, I don't want people to compare their story with someone else's. Maybe this is not, well, I've heard it said before, God gives you what you need when you need it, how you need it. Mm. For me, it was several hours of power, of love, of electrical fire and, you know, praising God in tongues and speaking in English and going back and forth and shaking and trembling because I had come out of the drug culture and that's Mm. what I needed. Mm. But I've seen some people, it takes 30 seconds. Some feel a rush of power. Some don't. Some people uh, need to say hallelujah over and over, you know, uh, you know, I, I'm not into jump starting people, you know, uh, at all. I'm I'm into just let's let see what the Holy Spirit has for you. Uh, so maybe I'm kind of deviating on the, <laughs> on mm-hmm. here, but what what do you think about that? Yeah. So I remember 
you know, in, in my heritage, in, in the stream of churches that I'm in, a lot is emphasized on the initial experience, the moment when it happens for you. And you were initially baptized in the Holy Spirit, which I believe is incredibly valuable. I think when Jesus was talking to his disciples about it, he was talking about a particular moment in time where that would happen, just like what you described happened for you, uh, Jared, in your experience. What I was concerned about is what af- what happens next. Mm. So um, the, 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 the stories, each chapter in the book is written in a way to try to tell one person's story and then teach around some of the principles of, of what the scripture says and, and what their story sort of illustrates. And um, so I never knew growing up what to do with it after I had received it. <laughs> so I would always, well, I've had that happen. I was, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, but what now, what does that, what does that open up for me now? So very practically, what I think the baptism of the Holy Spirit does, and you use this word, Maybe it was before we started recording today, but that the Holy Spirit activates you. And so we, you, you get activated into a partnership with him where he starts to speak to you about things that he wants you to do and say where the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit mentioned in 1 Corinthians 12 start to be activated through your life, where um, all of a sudden now you begin to step into a supernatural dimension. Your thinking now becomes infused with what can be beyond the natural. Uh, your emotions can be infused in something beyond the natural, your actions. Um, we can believe that God can start to use us to, to pray for the sick and see them recover and healed and, and, and so many other things that now start to flow out of our life. When we learn that we have a partner now who wants to activate us continually um, and the baptism in the Holy Spirit is the first activation moment. It's like starts there. Oftentimes he, he does what he did for you, which is he brings healing from the past and he, and he works deliverance and freedom in areas maybe where there's been bondage. Um, and, and he begins to infuse us with joy and, 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 and the affirmation and assurance of our salvation in Christ. But, but then he's, a, he's not just, it's not he's the force or, a, or just a presence. He's a person that we can know. And so we are immersed in, in our relationship with a person that we can know that we can do partnership with every day of our lives. And that's where the adventure is. It's not just that one time moment where we get baptized, but it's every day of our life doing life with the Holy Spirit as our best friend and our partner in life and in ministry. Amen. Yeah. So what are the benefits to it? What what can people expect? Because I'm you're you're speaking my language. Mm-hmm. You know, I know for me, I'd, I'd had some dreams and some vague visions before I received the baptism of the spirit, but right after. So very significant. November 14th of 1998. That's the day I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then after that, I could hear his voice more clearly. I could mm-hmm. uh, I started having visions more, more vivid and dreams, more realistic, you know, supernatural dreams. So what are the benefits for some people when they start asking for the baptism of the spirit, they receive it, and then they they step into the supernatural life. What, what can they expect? Yeah, so I think that, again, Jesus said, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, you'll be my witness. So I think mm-hmm. one of the things primarily is that God wants, through you, through me, to prove that Jesus is alive. So we are, so we, are, we, are we can't mm-hmm. do that without signs that follow. So, when we are operating in the power of the Holy Spirit, we have the chance to prove to a broken, hurting world that Jesus is who he said he is and that he lives. Um, ultimately, though, interpersonally, we, we have these you know, things that happen within us. So you mentioned dreams and visions. So I think we get new revelation from God. Yeah. Not just when we, when we study the scripture, the Holy Spirit makes it alive to us, but sometimes he just imparts to us dreams, visions, pictures, prophetic insight. Yeah, things that we would never know otherwise. Then he gives us power gifts, which he flows through us to have gifts of faith, the working of miracles and healings. So we get revelation, we get power, and and then we get some ability to speak it under his inspiration. We can prophesy or we can pray in the spirit, which gives power to our words so that our mouth is beginning to be used. And so uh, so now, you know, and, and the revelation we get from God isn't just related to ministry. It can be anything in life. Like, I, I, I don't think I wrote this in my book, but I know I have a friend of mine who lives in Scandinavia who worked for a ball bearing company and they're manufacturing 
had a flaw in it. And, and one of the ball berry, the, one of the products they had wasn't working properly. And the Holy Spirit gave him insight into what was wrong with the, the assembly line. He, he had no technical knowledge or experience, but the Holy Spirit gave him a picture of the problem. And he diagrammed it, what he saw, and he took it to his bosses and they, they tested it and it worked. Amen. And so <laughs> they actually promoted him six levels up in the organization because the Holy Spirit gave him insight into a problem he naturally knew nothing about. So just think of everything the Holy Spirit knows. He, there is no limit to his knowledge and he lives on the inside of each of us and he can tell us things at any time we need them. And so, oh my goodness, why, why would we not want a relationship with the Holy Spirit? No, he doesn't tell us everything, but he tells us the things we need to know at the, the moment we need to know them. And, some, and, and I think the baptism of the Holy Spirit kind of puts our antennas up because we're able to, to hear a little clearer than we ever had before. Um, because that's just what the Holy Spirit does when, he immerse, when we're immersed in him, all of a sudden, things start to change for us. Amen. So what can somebody do right now who's listening or who's viewing it, this and they want to step through that gateway to the supernatural life and then just have more relationship with Jesus, more relationship with their partner, the Holy Spirit? What can they do right here, right now to start stepping into that? Yeah. So I always go to Ephesians 5 where it says, don't be drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery, but understand what the will of God is. Um, and then it says, be, be filled with the Holy Spirit speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making music in your heart unto the Lord. So I think that the Holy Spirit becomes more active in our life when we become vocal and we start to praise him. We start to worship and we just say, Holy Spirit, I want you to come into my life. Jesus, you promised you'd baptize me. And then you just start to out loud, not in, not just in your head, but out loud, uh, you start to activate your, your praise, begin to give him praise, sing, worship, quote, declare Psalms. And as you posture yourself that way, you just make yourself ready for the Holy Spirit to fall upon you in whatever unique way will happen for you, whether it's like me really quietly in my living room, or it's like Jared, you know, where all of a sudden the presence of God comes in and you have, you get a moment like ours with God. Um, you open yourself up by asking for him to come into your life and flood your life with his presence. And by filling your your mouth with praise and staying with it, you know, not quitting your speaking of praise, but staying in that in that moment. I think also if you have somebody around you, pastor, a friend who's experienced this, to get them to agree with you, lay hands on you, pray for you, that the Holy Spirit will come upon your life. But you don't have to wait for that. I mean, right where you are, right, right in your own little space, you can start to ask the Holy Spirit to come upon you that way. Cause I, I know he will. Yeah. It's what he, he loves to do. Amen. Well, Jeff, can you lead people now? I, I'd encourage them. Um, if they have another digital device, start playing some worship music in this, mm -hmm. you know, for the, just for the next couple minutes, can you lead them in a prayer and in an activation, which is, you know, activating, just taking a step of faith, applying the biblical principles to their life in this moment to receive, to ask. So would you uh, do, the, do us the honor of praying yeah. for people to receive? So right where you are, whatever, whatever room you're in right now, I want you to just begin to give him praise. Just to speak out loud, whisper it, declare it, shout it, whatever you need to do. We just praise you, God. We thank you for who you are, Jesus. We know you are alive. We know that you are risen from the dead. You have saved us. You've redeemed us. You promised that you would baptize us with your spirit. And so this gift, we, we just thank you for it. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Yeah. Maybe you just want to, right where you're at, say that. Say, Holy Spirit, I welcome you. Come into my life. I want to know you. Uh, flood my life with your presence. And I just pray right now. I, I just extend my hand towards those who are praying through this. And I pray right now in the name of Jesus that the power of the Holy Spirit would come upon your life. Even as you open up your lips and you give him praise, I pray that even right now, the flood and presence of the Holy Spirit would just come and rest on your life. Jesus said, out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. So I pray that that river of living water would come into your life right now in the name of Jesus, even as you worship him in this moment. And Holy yeah. Spirit, we thank you for your presence. Thank in you. Jesus' name. Thank you.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Love you, Jesus. You are so amazing. Yes, you are. Keep praising him. Keep praising him. Mm. I, I sense his presence so heavy on this. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. Some of you may be speaking in tongues right now. Keep speaking that out in Jesus' name and tell them in your native language, thank you, and switch back and forth between that prayer language and you know that he's given you now in this moment. Give him praise. Give him glory. Thank you, Lord. Man. Mm, thank you. It's always kind of difficult to end times like this because mm. I know that for some people it's 30 seconds, three minutes, three hours, or whatever, but the... Guys, if you're listening to this, you're receiving. Keep receiving. Keep praising Jesus. Keep glorifying him. Keep worshiping him. But Jeff, it was an honor and a pleasure to have you on the podcast. What is the best way for people to get a hold of you uh, and get more information about your ministry? Yeah. The, so my personal page is jeffleakonline.com, and you spell the last name L-E-A-K-E. So that would probably be the easiest way to get in touch with me. Amen. And then is that a good place for them to purchase your book, Gateway to a Supernatural Life, or are there yeah. other websites that they could go to for that? You can do it there. Um, you can do it at shoptheword.com, which is Whitaker House's uh, easy one-stop shop for, for a lot of books, or you can find it on Amazon or other places where books are sold. Well, guys, this was the final episode of season four of Adventures in the Spirit with Jared Lasky. I want to encourage you to text this to somebody real quick it's really easy just there's some three dots on your phone if you have an iphone or something click on that hit share text it to somebody so that they could receive a step through the gateway into the supernatural life and uh be prepared for season five because we're going to be interviewing more people who will be talking about how you can live the supernatural life the spirit empowered life jeff it was an honor and a pleasure to have you on adventures in the spirit brother Thank you so much, Jared. May the Lord bless you on your next season, and congrats on season four. Thank you so much for listening to Adventures in the Spirit with Jared Lasky, a podcast that activates you to live the supernatural life. Subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast platform and share it with your friends. Leave a five-star rate and review, which helps us reach more people with the love and power of the Holy Spirit, and partner with us at firebornministries.com. And may you live your best spirit-empowered life and have your own adventures in the Holy Spirit.